Hey guys, how's it going? This is the Power Gunner, and welcome to my review of Grim Fandango Remastered. So, before I talk about anything else, I am just going to get the remasterification out of the way for that part of this review. So basically, the textures are way better than in the original game, and it's cool because if you just press R3, you can switch back and forth from the original graphics to the remastered graphics. Okay, now... Most of you guys probably don't even know what this game is, so let's start off there. So, Grim Fandango is a game that takes place in the Land of the Dead, which is inspired by the Spanish Day of the Dead holiday thing, and you play as Manny Calavera, who is a travel agent in the Land of the Dead, and he's kind of like a Grim Reaper, and yeah, it's funny, and it sounds like the plot of a Pixar movie, kind of. And probably the one thing that this game reminds me most of is a Pixar movie, and I say that as a very, very good thing. Like, with the good Pixar movies, which most of them are good. So yeah, the world that this game takes place in is awesome. It's like, so different from what you're used to seeing in a video game, and it's funny, it's full of comedy, and these great characters that you will just remember forever, maybe, probably not, because I don't know anyone's memory who can literally remember anything forever. Probably. Maybe. But anyways, now that we are done talking about stupid stuff that has nothing to do with the review, such as remembering memories, let's get back to it. So, what kind of a game even is Grim Fandango? What will you be doing in it? Well, it's like a point-and-click adventure puzzle, except for there's no pointing and clicking if you play on the PlayStation 4 because you don't have a mouse. Duh. So, one thing that I did want to say about the characters in this game, although most of them are fantastic and really well-developed, the main villain in the game I thought was very underdeveloped, and that character is barely even in the game, and you feel like you don't know that character by the time that you meet that character. And it's like, okay, you're this person I've been hearing about this whole time, but... I don't really know you, but yeah, also sorry if that was kind of spoilery, but it's not that spoilery, and it should be fine. It won't ruin your experience. But yeah, this game just has a great tone with the comedy in it, so it is a puzzle game, and it doesn't hold your hand with any sort of tutorials or hints or anything because it has none of that. This game makes you think to solve puzzles, and when you do solve them, it makes you feel smart, which is the best thing that a puzzle game can do, with the puzzles at least. So this comedic tone that the game has carries over into the puzzle solving. You will end up having to use really random weird things in really random weird ways to solve the puzzles, and that just has this sense of comedy in it that is so great. Now, what can be bad with the gameplay being like this, to where it can take you forever to figure out what you have to do, and it's so bizarre what you do have to do, is sometimes you get stuck for what could be a very long time. I decided that I don't like being stuck for a long time, so I just looked up some uh, walkthrough tutorial helpful thing online, which that might help you too if you don't like being stuck for very long lengths, but overall I thought that that wasn't a very big problem in the game of sometimes, well, a lot of the time getting pretty stuck in there. And yeah, this game also has a large mystery element to its story, which was really cool because the puzzles sort of make you feel like you're a detective and you're solving things on your own, except for when you have to go look at some walkthrough, you know, other than that. So just some small things to mention in this game, uh, really quickly here. The aspect ratio is going to be like a square boxy, like 4x3 aspect ratio. And you can stretch it, but it looks absolutely horrible, so don't do that. I thought that the aspect ratio was weird at first, but then I got used to it and I like didn't even realize it was different, pretty much. Also, I guess I didn't even give you guys this uh, background information yet, but the original Grim Fandango came out on PC in 1998, I think, which is the year I was born. Yeah, I'm playing a game the, from the year that I was born that I never got to play. And because of weird things, I don't know tons of stuff about it, but basically it got to the point to where you couldn't even get it on the PC unless you pirated it or something. So that was one of the main reasons that they remastered it, and I'm very glad that they did. Also, the graphics in this game are awesome. Like, the graphical style is just great, and the um, animation and stuff. 
I really am a big fan of how it was done. Now, of course, the graphics aren't as good as, like, modern games and stuff, but one thing that I think is really impressive is that when you switch from the remastered graphics to the original ones, Pretty much the only thing that changes is objects in the environment, because the environments themselves must have been like pre-rendered to already look good and they like don't even change, so that's awesome. Also, one little thing that I love in this game that just shows that the developers had a lot of passion in making it, and I always love it when these sort of little things are put into games, there is a... AFK animation, so that means when you haven't touched the controller in a while and the game isn't paused, then Manny smokes a cigarette, which I thought was cool. Maybe it's a cigar, I don't know, I'm not an expert on smoking because I don't smoke. But yeah, this review has kind of gone all over the place, but this game is kind of weird in the same way that you solve puzzles, so maybe it's fitting? I don't know. Also, you might have noticed this gameplay is just from the very start of the game. That is because I wanted to spoil as little as possible of the jokes and everything in this game. Also, you probably noticed from watching the gameplay, but you can like choose what dialogue you say, but there aren't like choices that change the story. But yeah, it's a very good story, there's a great tone, great setting, great music, I forgot to mention that, and the characters, it's just great. This game is funny, it has heart, and as soon as I started playing this game, it instantly became one of my favorite games of all time. This is a absolutely fantastic game, and you really should play it. It's only $15 on the PlayStation Store. I'm guessing it's $15 on Steam or wherever you buy it for PC. So yeah, basically, buy this game. Um, one more complaint I have about it, which there aren't that many, just one that I sort of forgot to mention, is so there are four major, like, chapters, I'll say, to this game so that I don't spoil anything. And the first and the second ones are absolutely amazing for the most part. And then I thought that the third and fourth ones were still very, very good, but they sort of lost a little bit of how good the first two were. So just know that the second half of the game probably won't be quite as good, but who knows, maybe you think it will be. And yeah, this game was such an enjoyable experience. It's very different from any other games I've played. And yeah, as I said, this instantly became one of my favorite games of all time. You need to play it. So yeah, guys, thank you for watching my review of Grim Fandango. I need to play some bad games here pretty soon because a lot of the games that I have on my list of games that I need to make reviews of right now are pretty good games. Um, but yeah, I just don't really feel like wasting my money on bad games or ones that look bad. But yeah, once again, thank you for watching. Like if you enjoyed, I guess, and have a great day, guys.